This is Quinn. Don't let that barn glitter fool you. She's actually a Harlequin sheep, not nougat rolled in pecans. I'm here to give her a haircut and remove all the stuff that looks like the waiter at Olive Garden got a little out of control with his Barmesan. Once I remove the belly, I can finally get into that first hip and whoa, salt and pepper spots. Didn't see that coming, did you? Now we move up the neck, cleaning off her little cheek. At this point, I'm just trying not to get lost in that black hole as everything peels off. I lay her down for long blows, begging to see more of those spots, and I am not disappointed. As I get to that last shoulder, she wiggles a little bit, trying to find a comfy spot. I let her take her time to find it, and then a couple more blows and I'm finished. When I let her go, she forgets that she's supposed to run off and lays there until I nudge her gently. When I asked her for a review, she said she liked it, and even gave me a thank you. This is Weather. He's a castrated male sheep, also known as a Weather, and whether or not he likes it, today's haircut day. I start by cleaning off his belly, careful not to nick his little pizzle. Now it's time for a little manscaping. As I maneuver his empty sack, I can't help but ask myself what brought me to this point in my life. At least I get to look at his pretty coloring as I clean off that first hip and up his racing striped neck. Weather is an East Frisian sheep. His breed is known for milk, meat, and wool production, but this guy's known for being fat and lazy. As I get to the last side, I can definitely feel this for myself. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot that I was doing commentary. I got lost in his blanket coming off so beautifully. Now a couple butt pats and he's ready to go enjoy the weather. Afterwards, I felt kind of bad because all the other rams thought he was really pretty. This is Baby Doll. She's a Dorset sheep and probably the largest one I shear. She's so big it took me seven minutes to shear her as opposed to my normal three. It might not look like I'm struggling at this speed, but boy am I. I had to turn my shears off just to lift her. Oh. Dorsets are typically used for the show ring or meat production, but these two girls are just here for the snacks. This family has both the mother and the daughter, this being the mom, and these girls are good for nothing but being the backyard lawnmower. As I pull this big girl up, all I can think is, my neck, my back, it all hurts because you're fat. At the end, she ends up laying down because she kicks, and honestly, there's nothing I can do about it. Honestly, it's not worth the energy to set her back up. A couple butt pads before I go check out that fleece. This thing is the size of a twin bed. Wow. Because I felt bad about fat shaming her and we're all about body positivity, I apologize for some treats like any woman would want. This is Rachel. Yo, this is Layla. She's a hot sheep ready for her summer dew. We begin by removing her belly wool and she gives a little wiggle just to get a little more comfortable. Toss that out because it's not as good as the rest of the wool and continue through the crutch and into the first hip. Layla is a Lester long wool and is really good at producing high quality fiber. So good that she does that instead of making babies. Besides the lovely length of these locks, you can see the beautiful crimp in each little piece. The crimp is the waviness, and that's an indication of how soft the wool is. Lester long wools are an endangered breed, meaning there are very few of them in the US. Not only do these guys have beautiful fiber, but they have an amazing luster. And you really can see that in the shine to their skin. It's not just the lanolin that gives the skin this sheen, but the actual texture of the wool. This will even translate into its yarn. Her owner will clean this up, have it spun into yarn, and sell it to the public. Now Layla is good to go for the summer heat. This is Pippin, and he's super excited, but it's probably because he doesn't know it's haircut day. I use his chin to help maneuver him backwards, and an upward motion helps him slip onto his butt. Then I pull him into position so I can begin giving him a haircut. I start by shearing his belly, careful not to nick his little pizzle, before I throw it out and move to his crutch. After that, it's into the first hip. Pippin is also a Lester long wool and probably has the darkest wool I've ever seen. It's honestly so dark that while I'm shearing, it's like shearing in the dead of night. He's super patient with me as I work around all the little crevices I can't see. Dark wool like his is very desirable. While you can dye fibers, many people love the richness of this dark color by itself. There's something about natural you just can't beat. I mean, look at it. It is gorgeous. Lester long wolves are a fast growing breed and need to be shorn twice a year. So although he's only two years old, this is already his third shearing and he takes it like a champ. This blue faced Lester ram is named Rory. And let me tell you why this is my favorite breed to shear. That open belly. These are basically shearer's dreams. No belly, no leg wool, and no face wool. But I didn't get that lucky with the testicles. Thanks a lot, Rory. Now that I finished his manscaping, I can show you the best part. 
look at that fiber. Not only are they easy shearing sheep, but they're pretty nice to look at too. They have extremely tight curls in their fleece, and it comes in a variety of colors, like this beautiful black. Oh, so gorgeous. Rory is young, and he was a little difficult shearing around the outside of his fiber. Basically, everywhere I entered the wool was a little bit sticky, but the rest of it sheared off beautifully. Maybe we could take one more look at the dark? Oh, yes. Notice the ombre color change from the bleach tips. Now back to Rory as we finish him up. Again, I kind of struggled with those outside pieces, but once I get into the thick of it, it rolls off like a dream. Two more swipes and he's good. Thanks, Rory. This is May, a Shetland sheep and by far the smallest I shear. Here's an average sized Shetland, and here is May. She was an orphan that was turned into a bottle baby and it really stunted her growth. You would think smaller is easier, but this is much more difficult for me. Besides the clippers being as big as her head, I was having a hard time keeping her comfortable, so I went down to my knees to accommodate. Since she's so small, her skin would easily fit in my clippers, so it takes lots of little bitty jabs to make sure that I don't get any skin in there. But just because she's small doesn't mean that she doesn't need a haircut too. Here's a quick side comparison of a ram at the same place. Now finish up the long blow so I can get to the last side so this little girl can go play. She's so little she barely fits between my legs. Since we're talking about the smallest, we might as well talk about the biggest. And here he is, all 300 pounds. A few more cleanup swipes and May will be good to go. Cool for the summer heat. <laughs> I think she likes it. Afterwards, I showed her my handiwork and I think she was impressed. So here's a video of probably the largest ram that I shear. His belly isn't the biggest part of him and yes, I shear that too. These guys get shorn twice a year and their wool is not utilized because of how short the length is. Since they're not worried about the wool, they choose to shear twice a year to help them combat the Texas heat. Now this guy's a couple years old and has a really nice set of horns on him. But with these really awesome looking horns comes the need to take care of all of the fiber around them. We want to make sure we get it nice and cleaned out so that they don't have to worry about flies bothering them. There is, however, only so much that you can do. The head of my shears is too big to fit in some of the crevices because of how tight they are, so I do my best to get them cleaned up. But there's no way to make this sucker perfect. Now we finish up on the long blows, and he is so freaking heavy. I'm just really excited that he's chill and lets me do pretty much whatever I need to with him. Now a balancing act for the last couple swipes and some butt pats when he's done. A potato! Just kidding, he's a very chunky pet sheep who would like to be able to see again. So I'm here to peel him. This big boy that should have only taken about three minutes ended up taking over seven. So I just skipped right past the belly and showed you the first tip here. He's pretty hefty, so let me show you a comparison. This is a typical size for baby dolls. And this is our chunky boy. As you can see, he likes to store snacks on his back and in all the little crevices of his fiber. So I work really diligently to make sure I clean all of that up so it doesn't give him any issues. The discoloration on his back is from all that dirt itching and him neurotically scratching. Now he kind of got away from me so I had to scoot him back into my machine so I could finish cleaning up his face. I have a hard time pulling him up because that chunky neck don't bend. But that's okay, we just accommodate. Now we're on the last side and I can tell he really appreciates it by the way that he relaxes into me. This peeling must seem like the best scratches ever. One more swipe and let's see him. Looking fresh, remember when he was... This is Gigante. He's way too big for me, so I let my wife handle him. With proper technique, she makes it look like a breeze. Now that she's done all my heavy lifting, I can get started. Again, I skip straight to the hip because I really want you to see the fleece at the end. Gigante is a Colombia sheep. They're known to be extremely tall and have excellent fiber. And this guy does not disappoint. His fleece is incredibly thick and rich, which is why he's a stud for this herd. He's not the heaviest, but he's definitely the tallest boy I've shorn. So I am grateful that he is being super cooperative. Until I get to his head, where he reminds me that if he wanted to, he could totally take me. This is just one year's worth of growth, and even though I'm bending him around, he's not being hurt at all. Quick turn off of my shear so I can maneuver him into the upward position. A couple wiggles to get comfy, and back to rolling the rest of it off. This guy lives on a fiber farm, so his 12 pound fleece will be sold so that someone can make yarn out of it. Now that he's all cleaned up, let's go check his fleece out. Look at that spread. Truly amazing. Thanks, buddy. Oof, this is Olivia and she's a hot mess. So I've come to try to tame that hair. Over the last year, she worked very hard to grow this beautiful coat, which helped keep her warm for the winter. But now it's getting pretty warm, so it's time to give this Colorado girl a summer body. She has beautiful long fiber, but I tried to zoom in here and it was just too dark to show you. After I clean up her first hip and her rump, it's time to finally cut off that bougie scarf she's been toting around. 
Freedom! Now a classy lady like this only wears the best so she makes sure that I know dry clean only and to treat it with extra care. Even though she's a hot mess, she's still the goodest of girls. Olivia is a Shetland sheep and usually those are very feisty, but not this classy lady. She waits very patiently while I roll off all that gorgeous thick fiber. She typically doesn't like to be handled, so I imagine she'd run off to find a patch of grass when we're through. But again, she threw me for another loop. She went from classy to creepy. Well, Olivia, did I do it right?